Welcome to the Dell Experience Lounge in lovely Round Rock, Texas. I'm Dave Nicholson, Chief Research Officer at the Futurum Group. And I am joined by Delmar Hernandez, Dell Technical Marketing Engineer, and Steen Graham, CEO of Scalers AI. Let's talk about distributed inference. So Delmar, remind us what the difference is between training and inference to start. So training is when you're teaching a model a new trick, right? Yeah. Fine tuning the model. And then inferencing is when you put it to work. So like Steen said before, like you're building and then deploying. Okay. Right? So inferencing would be the, the deployment of that. So model. what did we deploy here and how is it distributed? Yeah, so we wanted to showcase kind of the, the, the leading model in the industry at the time we were developing this, which is with, uh, with open licensing terms that uh, you know many businesses can use. Um, so we use the Llama you know, two seventy billion class of, class of models, and we're deploying that across a diverse set of, of infrastructure. We wanted to showcase to enterprises how they can they can leverage a, a multi node cl cluster powered by Ethernet and serve you know models to, to meet their their requirements. So once they once they built a model or trained a model, then they can deploy it on you know affordable off the shelf infrastructure using a clustering methodology that some of the leading companies in the world would use. So Steen mentioned diverse set of infrastructure. How, how, when we say diverse, diverse how? Different generations of power edge servers. So six, 16G, 15G. Um, you want me to get into specific model numbers? Yeah, or, sure, okay. yeah, yeah. Well, let me see if I can remember them all. So XE9680, that's our current gen AI okay. server. That's the big guy, eight GPUs. Um, XE8545 is like the, the little brother of that server, last gen. Um, and we G have, GPUs also in GPUs that? Okay. has four GPUs. Okay. Um, at 9680 has eight. Um, then so I'm going to go down the stack, okay. right? Then we have the R760 XA, which supports four GPUs, but those are PCIe, so okay. they're a little less performant than the big GPUs in the XE9680. <clears throat> and then we added, for fun, we added a PowerEdge R7625, which is an AMD-based server, so AMD CPUs. AMD GPUs. Okay. So, so you've got a mixture of AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA compute devices. Cats and dogs living together. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So when you when you distribute inferencing and when you're scaling inferencing, uh, are we talking about uh, scaling the number of concurrent users, the number of people who are asking things of the model at the same time, or is it the size of the queries? What What's being scaled when you when you distribute something like this? Yeah, um, so absolutely with, with large language models at which we kind of tested on deployed, you'd be you know, supporting concurrent users. If you're looking at another enterprise scenario where they've integrated like it, the APIs into their workflow, you could, you could support you know, many simultaneous calls to the, the APIs as well. It doesn't necessarily need to be a human on the other end of it. It could be you know, an auto-generated report within the company that you know, defines their compliance with the policy. Um, so there's, there's scalability beyond just like the human level interaction. But yeah, the concurrent users is kind of the north star and what we're supporting on those distributed inferencing clusters. And you know, ultimately, you know, want to show that you don't always need, you know, the latest, highest end GPU-based implementation. You can take advantage of your existing infrastructure, um, or what infrastructure is actually available to you in the market today, available to buy, and get you know highly performant inferencing capability to meet meet your, your requirement needs. Is, yeah. this just, is this just for show, or, or is this something that people can actually use I mean, as a reference? So the infrastructure that we use is infrastructure that a lot of our customers already have, right? So okay. Broadcom, Ethernet, PowerEdge switches. So this is not new science experiment type stuff, right? This is stuff that a lot of data centers have today. Um, so we just wanted to showcase how you can bring all that together with the magic of Scalar's AI's software expertise. So they kind of took the complexity out of making all of these GPUs and CPUs work together through software. And you can find the reference implementation, documentation, and solution code available on the Dell GitHub repo. So it's, it's there. So it's for those companies that have that existing infrastructure on PowerEdge, you know, this generation or the last, they can get up and running. So is this what the uh, democratization of AI looks like? <laughs> exactly, right? Like this is, the, and going forward, we're going to be doing the same thing. Yeah. So. If you had to summarize kind of the value proposition of what you were able to highlight here with this reference implementation, what's the main, what's the main takeaway 
I think the, the main takeaway is that you, you don't need to you know compromise or, or wait you know for the leading edge hardware. You can take advantage of your existing infrastructure and deploy production grade models and uh, you know across a across a diverse portfolio of semiconductor offerings. Delmar, any surprises uh, from any to actual testing results? Uh, were you surprised by the performance of various oh. systems? I, I was surprised at how few hurdles that we we had to jump over to make this work, right? Like I was expecting us to go in and spend a year on it. I think we spent maybe two months, three months, like from start to finish, right? Like, and it just worked. Most of the things that we put together just worked, right? Like the libraries worked out of box, the networking infrastructure worked. Uh, I think I'm, the folks out there might be wondering, well, was networking a bottleneck or using Ethernet, not InfiniBand? Like, the, uh, you know, surprise, like it wasn't a bottleneck. It worked, it was sufficient. It was more than sufficient. So th those were some of the things that we were wondering going in, right? Are, is, is networking going to be a bottleneck? Can we combine all of these heterogeneous compute devices and make them play nice together? Um, and then what does it look like when it's deployed? Is it performant? Uh, is it getting the, what is it, 100 mil, how many tokens per second? 100. 30? 10, 10, tokens 10, 10 tokens per second, right? Yeah. Even CPUs are getting that, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. And that's based on the size of the cluster that you created. So this is something that could scale out yeah. and, and deliver more performance, right? Yeah, and I think there's, you know, for you know enterprises and infrastructure companies, there's opportunity for <clears throat> uh, new forms of monetization. So if you think about it, you might have some really, really high speed top end GPUs in a cluster. You know, your you know quality of service offering can be higher in there, and then you can cash it down into like a freemium tiered model as well. So this this cluster plays really well to that. Where if you know if you want to emulate what the leaders in this industry do is offer a free, less performant offering, all the way up to a paid offering, you can do a similar thing. Whether that's a you know a large language model that you're offering, um, you know, internal to your organization, or API calls of your production based services to your clients. So that 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 kind of caching topography is an, another kind of way of thinking about um, exposing this as well across the distributed inferencing cluster. So you mentioned the amount of time it took to actually put this together. Um, now that you have this reference implementation and the documentation, uh, how much quicker would it be if you were, if someone were to uh, emulate or replicate what you, what you did? Or what, or, or am I looking at it the wrong way? Is it something that, that you would be able to do the second time more quickly? So I, I'm not an AI software developer, okay, but okay. I will I will tell you that like I took the the, the GitHub repo that, that Scalar's AI put together, yeah, and I cloned it on another infrastructure that we set up, and it took me maybe two days. You know, I think the other thing to frame this is, you know, from our engineering team, I think first of all, it's like just letting people know that this wasn't a failed experiment, that it was possible. Because I think most people are just defaulting to the latest, greatest infrastructure, you know, as they should because it's highly performant. Um, but there's trade-offs in that, you know, on affordability and availability. Right. And so realizing that, you know, we invested, you know, thousands of hours of engineering resources to make this solu solution code available, you know, in public so that Del Mar could do it, you know, in a few days and a few hours, right? So that's that's the the chasm that we've crossed here, you know, for democratizing AI, for off the shelf affordable AI, you know, with leading, you know, leading off the shelf infrastructure, and you know, of course, Ethernet based technology as well. Fantastic. Well, we've covered kind of an overview of um, what you put together from a distributed training and distributed inference perspective. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you again for joining us here at the Dell Experience Lounge in Round Rock, Texas. I'm Dave Nicholson with the Futurum Group.